Hello everyone. In this video lecture, we will be discussing about string handling concepts. Here is a list of topics that will be discussed in this particular module. The first topic is string handling. Before we look into what is string handling, we first need to know what is Java strings. As is the case in most other programming languages, in Java, a string is a sequence of characters. String is probably the most commonly used class in Java's class library. The obvious reason for this is that strings are a very important part of programming. But unlike many other languages that implement strings as character arrays, Java implements strings as objects of type string. The first thing to understand about strings is that every string that is being created is actually an object of type string. Even string constants are string objects. For example, in this assignment statement, I have assigned a string constant that is good morning to greet. So here, this string constant good morning is also a string object. In the next example, I have passed a string this is a string 2 to the print line function. So this particular string constant is also a string object. Implementing strings as built-in objects allows Java to provide a full complement of features that makes string handling convenient. For example, Java has methods to compare two strings, search for a substring, concatenate two strings, and change the case of letters within a string. Also, string objects can be constructed in a number of ways, making, making it easier to obtain a string whenever needed. The second thing to understand about strings is that objects of type string are immutable. Once a string object is created, its content cannot be altered. Which means when we create a string object, we are creating a string that cannot be changed. That is, once a string object has been created, we cannot change the characters that comprise that string. At first, even though this seems as a serious restriction, it is not so. We can still perform all types of string operation. The difference is just that each time we need an altered version of an existing string, a new string object will be created that contains all the modifications. The original string is left unchanged. This approach is used because fixed immutable strings can be implemented more efficiently than changeable ones. For those cases in which a modifiable string is desired, Java provides two options. They are string buffer and string builder. Both hold strings that can be modified after they are created. The string string builder and string buffer classes are being defined in java.lang. Thus, they are available to all programs automatically and they are declared as final which means that none of these classes may be subclass. This also allows certain optimization that increases the performance to take place on common string operations. All these three implement the character sequence interface. One last point to be noted is strings within objects of type string are unchangeable means the contents of the string instance cannot be changed after it has been created. However, a variable declared as a string reference can be changed to point at some other string object at any point of time. The string constructors String class supports several types of constructors in Java. 
the most commonly used constructors of string class are as follows string to create an empty string we call we will call a default constructor for example string yes is equal to new string so this creates a string object in the heap area with no value that is a string yes is being created or a string object yes is being created with no characters in it so here yes which is a string object is a empty string now suppose we want to create strings that have initial values then the string class provides a variety of constructors to handle this that is to create a string initialized by an array of characters we can use a constructor as shown string char or cats where cats is a array of characters here is an example char cats so we have three strings that are being or three character constants that are being assigned to the chars so chars is nothing but an array of characters so we have three character constants over here a b c now if i use this particular character array and pass this to the string constructor as a parameter so this string constructor will create a new string object yes so here this constructor string will will initialize a string object yes with the string a b c so when i try to print the value of this string object yes it displays me a string a b c we can also specify a sub range of character array as an initializer using the following constructor so string char cars int start index int num chars is a constructor which is taking three parameters the first one is a character array and the second and third parameters are nothing but the integer values which specifies a starting index and the second value that is num char specifies a number of characters to be used out of this character array that is start index specifies a index at which the sub range begins and num char is how many characters need to be copied from this character array so this particular constructor creates and initializes a string object with the sub range of a character array for example here char is a character array which has six character constants now this particular string constructor is taking parameters as chars that is this particular character array and two is the start index and num chars value is specified as three so when this particular statement is being executed this constructor string initializes the string object yes with the character c d e that is we all know that the index value of a will be zero that is the first element in a array will be zero so as i have specified the start index as 2 then c will be having the index 2 so the string object yes will be initialized with three characters starting from c so the string object yes will be having character c d e that is characters in position 2 3 and 4 which amounts to three characters which is specified by num chars we can also construct a string object that contains the same character sequence as another string object using the string constructor the format is string of string string object here here the string obj is a string object that is already existing for this we'll take up an example so in this particular example i have a character array c which has four character constants next i have created a string object s1 out of this character array 
so now s1 is a string object which is being created so using s1 object i create s2 as string s2 equals new string of s1 so when this constructor is being executed it creates s2 which is having the same value as that of s1 so s1 will be having ja the string java and s2 also will be having the same string java so we'll try executing this so here is an example so here the first first the character array c is being created so it is pointing to an array which has four character constants j a v a with the index 0 to 3 0 through 3 next the object s1 is being created and it is being initialized with the string java which is created using the character array c now using s1 which is a string object i'll be creating one more string object s2 so here s2 is created and it has the same string java that is both string cons uh, string object s1 and s2 contain the same string next when i try to print s1 and s2 so yes one it displays the string java and yes two also displays the same string java now let us take up one more example so here i have a main class called string demo within which i have created three string objects strob1 strob2 and strob3 respectively so the first two objects that is strob1 and strob2 are created using string literals i have created strob1 using the string literal first string and strob2 using the string literal second string respectively now the third string object strob3 is created using the plus operator and also I have made use of the already existing objects, string objects, strob1 and strob2. And I have concatenated the values held by these two string objects with a string literal add. So when I try to create this, a new object strob3 will be created, which is nothing but the result of adding the contents of strob1 with the string literal and and then it is being concatenated with the contents of strob2 so we'll execute this and see the result so first when i execute this line a uh, object is being created a string object is being created that is strob1 which as a string literal first string assigned to it so here the uh, string literal first string is encapsulated within the string object strob1 next when the next line is being executed the second string object is being created as you can see over here that is strob2 and it has a value second string next when the third statement is executed so it gets the value first string which is taken from strob1 and then it is concatenated with the string literal and and later the result the intermediate result is concatenated with the contents of string object 2 that is strob2 that is second string thus strob3 will be first string and second string when i try to print these the objects using the print then this is the result so this is the result of strob1 this is 
the result of str ob2 and when str ob3 is being printed it get printed as first string and second string even though java scat type uses 16 bits to represent the basic unicode character set the typical format for strings on the internet uses arrays of 8 bit bytes constructed from the ascii character set because 8 bit ascii strings are common the string class provides two forms of string constructors that initialize a string when given a byte array their forms are shown over here in the first form the string constructor takes one parameter that is a byte array in the second form the string constructor takes three parameters where the first parameter is nothing but the byte array and the second parameter which is an integer parameter is nothing but the index which specifies where the sub range actually begins and the third parameter specifies the number of characters to be used from this byte array that is i mean to say this ascii stars specifies that it is a array of bytes over here in the first form and also the second form of string constructor and start index is a index it specifies that it is an index at which the sub range actually begins and numchars specifies the number of characters to be used starting from the start index from the ascii characters which is nothing but a byte array also we need to note that in each of these constructors the byte to character conversion is done by using the default character encoding of the platform we'll illustrate these constructor using a programming example so here is a programming example which constructs strings from sub subset of character array so i have taken a class called substring constructor this is the main class and i have used a byte array i have named it as ascii so ascii is a byte array and it has six numbers being set or the byte array is initialized with six numbers starting from 65 to 70 actually these are nothing but the ascii equivalents of alphabets that is uppercase alphabets starting from a to f so 65 is the ascii equivalent of capital a 66 is the ascii equivalent of capital b so likewise 70 is the ascii equivalent of capital f next i have created a string object yes one and i have created it using the byte array ascii later on when i try to display the value of string object s1 it displays it as capital a b c d e f that is the ascii equivalents of 65 66 67 that is a b c are being printed over here next i have also created one more object yes 2 using the second form of constructor the string constructor is passed a byte array and also start index as 2 and num chars value is 3 over here so when i try to print yes 2 it prints c d e because the start index 2 specifies 67 which is nothing but the ascii equivalent of c and three characters starting from position 2 that is 67 68 69 which stands for c d and e so when i try to display yes to it displays a string c d e 
let us execute this program so this program is used to construct string from a subset of character array i have named this particular class as substring constructor so this is the main class i have a array of characters it is a byte array and i have six numbers in this particular array called ascii so ascii is a byte array and it has six numbers within the array so using this particular byte array i am i am creating a string object yes1 as string yes1 equals new string ascii so this creates a string yes1 whose values will be capital a b c d e f that is here the ascii value of capital a is 65 so these are nothing but these six numbers are nothing but the ascii values of capital a through f so when i use this character array to create a string object the string that is encapsulated into yes1 or the string constant yes1 will be nothing but capital a b c d e f so when i try to print it it will display a b c d e f so we'll try executing this particular program so first when i execute this a character array ascii is being created and it has six numbers ranging from 65 to 70 which are actually representing the ascii values of capital a through f and these are nothing but the index we already know that the index starts from 0 so when the next statement is being executed it displays the value that will be that is when this particular statement is being executed so here yes1 is being created and it is nothing but a string a b c d e f all in caps so when the next statement is executed we can see that it displays the string a b c d e f that is this is nothing but the string literal that is written into the object yes1 next i am trying to create one more string object yes2 using the second form of constructor which is taking again the same byte array plus two integer values so the first integer value represent the start index which actually in specifies the index at which the sub range begins and the second value that is 3 represents the number of characters that is to be picked starting from index 2 from the byte array so when this particular statement is executed yes 2 object is being created and three values or three characters are picked from the byte array starting from index 2 so which are the characters starting from index 2 it is 67 68 69 which represents actually c d e and when i print yes 2 it displays c d e so when the when this particular statement is executed the string c d e is displayed i have made a small modifications for the previous program here in in the place of 67 i am replacing it with 72 so i am assigning 72 to ascii of 2 previously it was 67 now when the statement is being executed it replaces 67 with 72 so the value gets updated over here even though i have changed the character array it does not affect yes1 which was being created by the same character array yeah ascii so when s3 is being created it the 
the string constant will be a b h d e f where 72 stands for capital h now when i try to print s1 and s3 you can see the difference so s1 will be a b c d e f and s3 will be a b h d e f here we need to note that the contents of the array are copied whenever we create a string object from an array and even though we modify the contents of the array after we have created the string the string will be unchanged so here i have created string s1 from ascii which was carrying the value 65 66 67 68 69 and 17 that is the ascii values which are representing capital a through f later even though i have modified the array it does not affect s1 we can also create a string from the string buffer by using the constructor such as this so this is a constructor string a string constructor which takes string buffer object we can also create a string from the string builder object using this constructor string which takes a string builder object next the constructor also supports the extended unicode character set such as this so here we have a string constructor which takes three parameters that is int code points which is an array that contains unicode code points and a start index and num chars which specifies the range that is the index from where the sub range has to begin and num chars specifies the number of characters that need to be chosen from the array string length the java string length method returns the length of the string the length here is equal to the number of 16 unicode characters in the string that is length is nothing but the sequence of characters that is represented by the string object suppose we want to obtain the length of the string object then we need to invoke the length method on the string object and the general form of the length method is as shown it is int length here is an example in this example i have a character array called charts which is initialized with three character constants a b and c in the next line i have created a string object yes using the string constructor and pass the character array charts to it and this line initializes the string object yes with the string constant a b c now if i want to know what is the exact length of the string object yes then i invoke the length method on the string object yes like this that is yes dot length and this displays the length of the string object yes as 3 this is because yes is now a string object which has a string constant encapsulated into it that is the string literal abc is encapsulated into the string object yes that is in this particular line the string constant abc was encapsulated into the string object yes so here the length method returns the length of the sequence of characters represented by the string object yes in the next example i had directly invoked the length method on the string literal good morning as good morning dot length as this string literal has 12 characters including the space it displays that the length of this string literal good morning is 12. special string operations 
Because strings are a common and important part of programming, Java has added special support for several string operations within the syntax of the language. These operations include automatic creation of new string objects or instances from string literals, concatenation of multiple string instances or objects by the use of the plus operator and the conversion of other data types that is primitive data types to a string representation. There are explicit methods that are available to perform all these functions but Java does them automatically and this adds clarity and also it will be more convenient for the programmer. String literals. In the earlier examples, we have seen how to explicitly create string instance from an array of characters by using the new operator. So in the example shown over here, I have a character array chars which is being initialized to three character constants A, B, and C. So using this particular character array, I have created a new string object S1 by invoking the const string constructor and passing the character array. So this creates a string object S1 and S1 will be initialized to a string literal or string constant A, B, C. However, there is an easier way to do this using a string literal. For each string literal in the program, Java automatically constructs a string object and thus we can use a string literal to initialize a string object. For example, in the code fragment shown here, we have two equivalent strings being created. One is S1 that is being created using a character array chars. The next string equivalent string or string object is S2 which is being created using a string literal or string constant ABC. Because the string object is created for every string literal, we can use a string literal in place of a string object. For example, we can call methods that is built in methods directly on the quoted string as if it were a object reference as follows in the print line statement. So here in the print line statement what I have done is I have invoked the built in function called length on the quoted string abc. So when I have invoked the length method on the string abc as expected it prints 3 which is nothing but the number of characters in this particular string literal. String concatenation. Generally Java does not allow operators to be applied to string object but there is one exception to this rule that is the plus operator can be used to concatenate two strings and produce a string object as a result. So this allows the user or the programmer to chain together a series of plus operations. For example, in this particular uh, fragment, the plus operator concatenates three strings. So here I have a string object uh, called age which is initialized to a string 9. Then I have created one more string object yes which is a result of concatenating this string literal where you have p is and a string object age and one more string literal years old. So when I try to print this that is when this particular code segment is executed this displays a string p is 9 years old and this is done by the plus operator which concatenates string literal and object and a string literal. There is one more practical use of string concatenation that is when you want to create very long strings we can use the plus operator. 
so instead of letting long strings wrap around within our source code we can just break them into smaller pieces using the plus operator to concatenate them so in this particular example i have a very long string being created so this is a string object and this is a result of concatenating several string literals using the plus operator so when this particular code is being run it displays that this could have been a very long line that would have wrapped around but string concatenation prevents this and here i had made use of four string literals which was concatenated using the plus operator string concatenation with other data types we can concatenate strings with other types of data we'll take up a small example which is a slightly modified version of the previous example in this example i'm trying to concatenate a integer variable with the string literal that is in this example i have a integer variable called age which is initialized to 9 and in the next line i have a string object that is being created and it is a result of concatenating string literals with the integer variables value so in this case age is integer rather than other strings like he is or he years old so in this particular statement he is and years old are string literals whereas age is a integer variable so when i try to concatenate age which is of type integer with string literals the output produce is same as the previous example this is because the integer value of age will be automatically converted into its string representation within the string object this string is then concatenated as before the here the compiler will convert an operand to its string equal equivalent whenever the other operand of the plus operator is an instance of string so when this particular code fragment is being executed it displays he is 9 years old by concatenating these literals that is he is and years old with the integer variable which has a value 9 so here the integer variables value 9 is converted into string however we must be very careful when mixing other types of operations with string concatenation expressions because it might give surprising results so consider this fragment of code so wherein a string object is being created by concatenating a string literal with two integer values using the plus operator so when this particular code fragment is executed it displays 4 colon 22 instead of 4 colon 4 so we had expected 4 colon 4 but instead it displays 4 colon 22 this is because of operator precedence the operator precedence actually causes the concatenation of 4 with the string equivalent of 2 to take place first this result is then concatenated with the string equivalent of 2 a second time so to complete the integer addition first we must actually parenthesize the integer values but here we haven't parenthesized the integer values therefore this integer value 2 is converted to enter into its string equivalent and concatenated with the string literal 4 next whatever is the intermediate result that will be later 
and concatenated with the string equivalent of 2 and thus we get 4 colon 22. But if we parenthesize the integer values like this, we can expect 4 colon 4. String conversion and two string method. When Java converts data into its string representation during concatenation, it does so by calling one of the overloaded versions of the string conversion method, that is the value of method which is defined by string. The value of method is overloaded for, for all primitive types and for type object. For the primitive types, value of method returns a string that contains the human readable equivalent of the value with which it is called but for objects the value of method calls the two string method on the object even though every class implements two string method because it is defined by the object however the default implementation of two string is seldom sufficient for most important class that we create we want to override the two string and to provide our own string representation and this is very easy to do the general form of two string is string two string to implement two string we simply return a string object that contains the human readable string that appropriately describes the object of the class and by overriding two string for classes that are created by us we actually allow them to be fully integrated into java's programming environment for example the two string can be used in print state or print method and print line statements and also in concatenation expressions here is a program which actually demonstrates overriding two string method for the box class. In this example, I have taken a class called box which has three data members width, height and depth, all of type double. Next, I have defined a constructor box which initializes the width height and depth with the values w h and d respectively next i have written a function called two string so this is the one which will override the two string method and this returns the dimensions of width depth and height next I have the main class which I have named as two string demo. Within the main class, I have created a box object called B. And when this object is being created, it calls a box constructor to initialize its width, height, and depth with values 10, 12, and 14, respectively. That is, the constructor box will be called which initializes the width, height and depth with values 10, 12 and 14. In the very next line I have created one more object but this object is of type string and this will be a result of concatenation concatenating a string literal with the box object that is I am concatenating a box object with the string literal so here when the box object is being concatenated with the string literal then automatically the two string method will be invoked by the value of method next over here I am trying to print the box object this also invokes the box that is a two string method that is to convert a box object to string the two string method will be automatically called that is box two string method is automatically invoked when a box object is used in a concatenation or if at all it is used in a print line statement so when this particular program is executed, it displays 
the output as dimensions are 10 by 14 by 12 and the same values are printed when I execute this particular statement wherein the string object is being printed it prints box B dimensions are 10 by 14 by 12 before we wrap up this video lecture we'll have a quick summary in this module 3 video lecture on string handling handling we have learned that string is a sequence of characters and is immutable and it is implemented as objects of type string next we discussed about how to use string constructors to create string objects that is by calling either the default string constructor to create an an empty string or using parameterized string constructor that takes character array to create a string object or creating a string object using already existing string object we have also discussed how to initialize a string using a byte array next we learned how to use string length method that returns number of characters of an object or string literal that is a length method was being used and this was being applied either on an object that is string object or, a, or on a string literal lastly we learned about special string operations wherein we discussed about automatic creation of new string instances use, uh, using string literals and concatenation of uh, string objects by using the plus operator wherein we uh, concatenated a literal with primitive data type values and lastly uh, over here the last example we had taken was uh, concatenating uh, the string literal with other data types wherein uh, we mean that we are concatenating a string with objects and for this the value of method and the two string methods were being used and the value of method and the two string method what it does is it gets a string representation of any value that is being passed to it it may be either a, a primitive data type value or a object so here when the primitive data type value is being passed it get the string representation of that primitive data type and if an object is passed then the value of method in turn calls a two string method to get the string representation of the object 